This morning, we're going to spend some time in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says, imitate me, even as I imitate Christ. Follow my example is what Paul is saying. Uh, this is something that you and I should embrace and, and, and set as a standard for ourselves. As a leader, here's how I should live. I should be able to tell people, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. Verse 2, he says, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I delivered them to you. So he's commending them. He says, brethren, I'm praising you uh, because you're following some of the traditions uh, that he has brought to them. Uh, he doesn't state what traditions he's, he's transferred to them. Uh, it's very likely he's talked to them about water baptism and the Lord's table. And they're following that. In this chapter, Paul is touching on two issues, two matters. One is about headship and uh, head covering. And the other one is on the Lord's table. In this passage, he's dealing with two things. He's dealing with the, with the truths of spiritual headship or spiritual authority. At the same time, he's applying that in the context of a problem they have, which is that of head covering. And it goes like this. The head of the woman is the man. The head of man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. The word, I want to point out here that the word man and woman can, uh, can mean in a generic sense male, female, but also can be used in a very specific sense of husband or wife. The same words. Therefore, the authority, therefore, that, that now should be expressed in the other structures, which is the head of, Christ, head of the man is Christ, or the head of the woman is man, should be expressed in the same way. That means the man willingly submits to Christ. In this case, the believing man or the husband willingly submits to Christ. The wife willingly submits to the husband or in the local church setting, Women willingly submit to the leaders who are in the local church. It's a willing submission. Notice even in this entire passage, Paul, even though says the man is ahead of the woman, he does say, point out that we are co-equal. Because he says the man came out of the woman and so we are interdependent. And that is also what the rest of the scriptures say. For instance, the Bible says in Galatians 3.28, in Christ there is neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ. Now the other matter he's addressing in the church at Corinth has to do with the Lord's Supper. There was a lot of disorder going on during communion time. And what we can infer from this passage is that, you know, for some reason in keeping the tradition that Paul had delivered to them, that partaking in something so sacred had become more like partaking in a feast. And because they were not discerning the Lord's body, because they were doing it in an unworthy manner, God had to judge them. They were placing themselves in a, a, under God's judgment. Part of that judgment was what was happening. They were losing out on the blessings that should have been theirs through partaking in the Lord's table. When we partake in the Lord's table, what the Apostle Paul is telling us here is that each time we partake of the Lord's table, we are making a proclamation. We proclaim, he says. We proclaim two things. We proclaim our faith in His completed work on the cross. And we proclaim our faith in His coming again. That's, your, that's symbolic. It's your act of faith. As you eat that bread and drink this cup, you're saying, I'm identifying with what Jesus did for me on the cross. I am receiving it for myself. And when you and I do that, we can expect God, by His power, to respond to our act of faith. Now when we do it that way, then we can receive the blessings of the cross. Amen.